there is our final partition plan. We haven't really changed the disk yet, but there's what it looks like. The green is where our Ubuntu and everything to do with Ubuntu will live. There's our swap for virtual memory in the orange, and then the 17 gigs of blue is for whatever we want to use it for down the road. It's a little more useful to actually make it a partition rather than leaving it as free space, which you couldn't use. And now we're going to enter some information for that first single user that will be enabled on the system. I'm going to have my primary user account on all of these machines as electric. This is also where you assign the host name. Matrix is going to be the name of our desktop machine. We will not have automatic login we will require a password to log in and so when the machine machine boots up you'll just get a login prompt you're given a summary of all your choices and settings before the changes and the installation is actually done I should point out here that this advanced button is very important in some scenarios right here is where you would choose to install the bootloader into a non-standard location in other words, not installed onto the master boot record of your primary disk. Let's look at that really quick because I do like to do a lot of dual boot and multi boot machines. And what you would do here, if this was going to be a, a multi boot machine, you would probably choose to install the bootloader onto a floppy disk. And then perhaps you might, uh, th then you might install that into a Windows folder and use NT loader which is a good way to do your multi booting. We'll get into that in detail later, but I just wanted to point out here that this is an important thing. I especially say it's important because if you were not careful and you had a good working Windows system, if you kind of miss this here and let the bootloader get installed, you would kind of wipe out your Windows installation. So if you're going to be doing Windows multi boots with Ubuntu, remember this advanced tab here right before you do your partitioning and install. We're not using that right now, and we'll go ahead and begin the install now. The installation is underway after partitioning and formatting, and it'll be a while now with some progress bars as basically a lot of files are copied over. It's been about five minutes now and it looks like we're about halfway done copying files. The grub bootloader was just installed so it looks like we're getting to the end of the installation. Installation is complete and we will now do our first boot up. The CD-ROM ejects automatically and we're reminded to remove it. But you know what we probably want to do now is go back into our BIOS and set it to boot on the hard drive first. Or I rather set it to boot on the floppy, then the hard drive, then the CD-ROM, which is a more typical setup. The CD-ROM is removed, so I'll just hit enter and then quickly go and press the F2 key to go into the BIOS setup. Make the first boot device the floppy, which is typical, and the second will make the hard drive and third CD-ROM. Now our system, using Grub, will boot up into Ubuntu. Ubuntu desktop boots up very quickly into the login screen. We enter the username and password for the first user we created.
and we're now logged into our brand new installation of Ubuntu Desktop 9.04. As soon as you log in for the first time, probably dependent upon being connected to the internet, you'll see that the update manager is running and has something to tell you. And what that is is that it has many, many updates to numerous packages that have newer releases since this installation disk was released and it's always good to apply those on a regular basis so we'll let those all install right now and as usual we have to enter some privilege access here when you're a regular user and you're asked to give some authentication for installations like this, you're effectively using sudo to act as root for the installation. The update manager will now download the packages it needs for each update. Our installation took about 15 minutes to do all of its work and this update may take around the same amount of time. With our initial updates complete, we can now enjoy our fresh installation of Ubuntu Desktop 9.04.